an auteur who is not only able to perfectly capture the realism within adolescent lives, but is able to do so in a simply, happy, and ordinary way that is appealable and relatable to the majority. John Hughes, an auteur who is famously known for his teen trilogy of the 80s, introducing the Brat Pack, and not only directing several of the 80s hit films, but writing them too. John Hughes was born on February 18, 1950 in Lansing, Michigan, but he grew up in Chicago, Illinois. He attended Glenbrook North High School, which was formerly named Shermerville, and which is where Hughes gained inspiration when creating the setting for all of his films, which take place in Shermer, Illinois. In his early life, he attended the University of Arizona and dropped out during first year. He moved back to Chicago to pursue a career in ad copywriting. At this time, he began to write comedy, and he wrote a story called Vacation 58, which was inspired from his childhood family vacations and eventually led him to a job at National Lampoon magazine. This story gained a lot of attention and was the basis for the film National Lampoon's Family Vacation, which Hughes wrote and was released in 1983. Excuse me, Holmes. <laughs> Aha. What it is, bro? We're from out of town. No shit. Yeah, listen, I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, give me directions back onto the expressway. Okay, no, okay. I know you have to go. Just answer me one question. Yes, you're a total fag. <laughs> it's not the question. I can't believe this. They fucking forgot my birthday. Hughes then began to move to his famously known teen films. His directorial debut, Sixteen Candles, was released in 1984, which exemplifies one of his most frequent tropes within his films, the insecurities represented in a teenage girl. Sixteen Candles introduced Molly Ringwald to Hollywood, and she again starred in several of other Hughes' films like Pretty in Pink and The Breakfast Club. Another famous film directed by Hughes is The Breakfast Club, released in 1985. It is about a group of five teens who each represent a different social clique who spend the Saturday together in detention. A fact about The Breakfast Club is that the iconic scene where the teens open up to each other about their lives in the library is totally improvised. Hughes was known for representing extreme stereotypes within his films. In The Breakfast Club, there is the princess, the brain, the criminal, the athlete, and the basket case. The message portrayed in this film is that there is each of those stereotypes in all of us, and that adult, adults are crazy to get teenagers to narrow it down to just one. After The Breakfast Club, he directed and wrote Weird Science in 1985. And then after that, he did Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where he then moved away from his teen-centric films. He then directed Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, starting John Candy and Steve Martin. They're going in the wrong direction! You're going to kill somebody! You're going the wrong way! Another common trope that is seen in John Hughes' films is teenage girls who struggle with the societal pressure to lose their virginity. It is admired that Hughes chose relatable teen issues that can still be applied today in 2017. He then directed She's Having a Baby in 1988, Uncle Buck in 1989, and Curly Sue being his final film that he directed in 19. He may have a short directorial filmography, but he has written many films like Home Alone 1 and 2, The Great Outdoors, and the National Lampoon series. When John Candy suddenly passed away in 1994, Hughes stayed away from the press and the public entirely. He refused to make any work or record any interviews. Though he continued to write, he never did the way he once used to. John passed away on August 6, 2009, suddenly in two from a heart attack. In 2010, the Oscars held a tribute for him, performed by Matthew Broderick, Molly Ringwald, Judd Nelson, Ali Sheedy, Macaulay Culkin, John Cryer, and Anthony Michael Hall. Nevertheless, it was shown during this tribute the impact John Hughes had on filmmaking, particularly in regards to adolescence. Despite the fact he changed gears and started to make films more family-centric rather than just teen-based, he stuck to the overall same genre, comedy. John Hughes never lost his ability to make an audience laugh, and for that, he will forever be commemorated. Don't, don't.